Building Survey, an introduction. Introduction to the module. This module will introduce the concepts of a survey and a building survey, providing you with the definitions and key elements of these procedures. You will also learn the history of surveying, as well as the specific elements in providing good quality homes. Finally, this module will take you through the requirements and knowledge needed by a building surveyor in addition to their responsibilities. This module will cover the following topics. Survey. Building survey. A brief history. Quality initiatives for housing. Requirements of a building surveyor. Skills and knowledge needed to be a building surveyor. Responsibilities of a building survey. Survey. Surveying is a means of making relatively large scale, accurate measurements of the Earth's surfaces. This process involves several steps, including concluding what data from these measurements will be used, condensing and interpreting the data in question so that it can be more easily utilized. Determining both the relative position and the size, using the measurement requirements as a guide. A survey has two functions. Although these functions are similar, they are actually opposites. These functions are to identify and determine pre-existing horizontal and vertical positions. This function would be used when, for example, mapping an area. To mark an area. This may be done to control construction or to signal land boundaries. Building Survey A building survey's purpose is to examine and evaluate both how well a building has been constructed and on its current condition. This information allows building surveyors to advise their client on the impact this condition will have on them, such as future issues. Typically, Building survey will not offer information on how much the property is worth. A building surveyor will also offer a client advice relating to new buildings, such as their design and construction. A building surveyor's role is also to evaluate the quality and condition of buildings. They will use this information to advise on how these properties can be improved. This may include being brought in line with modern legislation or standards, a surveyor will examine different types of building, including houses, as well as public buildings and commercial properties. It is important that the building surveyor be aware that every client will have particular needs and that the results of the survey need to be applied to these requirements. Since May 2010, home sellers no longer need to provide a home information pack. They do, however, need to provide an Energy Performance Certificate, EPC. Home Condition Reports, HCR, are optional reports which, at present, have an uncertain future. Some of the features of the HCR have become a part of the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors Home Buyer Report. The principal functions of an HCR include an overall assessment of a property's condition and functionality, identifying and indicating any defects that are hazardous or require rectifying or investigation. Ensuring that the property meets the standards of the RDSAP, which assesses the quantity of energy a dwelling will consume, while providing a defined level of comfort and service provision. The latest version of the SAP was published in 2012, and it applies to existing dwellings in all parts of the UK. For further information, please click the following link. A brief history. It is likely that surveying began as far back as in ancient Egypt, meaning that the practice might be 5,000 years old. Geometry, earth measurements, was probably developed out of the need for surveys to be conducted. One early device was a libella, which used a plumb line and weight that was suspended from a triangular A-frame. This allowed the establishment of level lines. More devices followed, such as the magnetic compass in the 13th century and an early version of the transit in the 16th century. In the 17th century, the vernier was created, allowing the angles to be read with greater accuracy. The 18th and 19th centuries also contained improvements in both instruments and field methods. Wars have led to further technological advancements in the 20th century. 
computer and electronic use and surveying is a direct result of military reconnaissance and mapping applications. Space age technology was used for surveying from the 1980s. This included electronic measuring instruments, laser leveling devices, and surveying via satellite photographs. However, the traditional methods of surveying are still both useful and relevant. Quality initiatives for housing Good quality housing is vital for a physically and mentally healthy life. Everyone deserves the right to housing of a certain quality, which prevents problems such as disease transmission vectors, food and water contamination, and heightened stress. There are a number of specific housing quality aspects. Ventilation Ventilation is important, particularly when cooking or heating, used fuel produces harmful chemicals and particulate matters. Inhaling this can result in respiratory problems, bronchitis, asthma, etc., or easy tuberculosis transmission. This can be prevented by ensuring that the fumes from cooking are removed from within the house as quickly and easily as possible. When designing a house, an adequate number of windows or air bricks, bricks with holes drilled through to allow air circulation, can be used to facilitate this process. Lighting Inadequate indoor lighting can have negative effects, such as eyesight problems or depression. A large number of windows, allowing a greater amount of natural light, can mitigate or prevent these issues. Insufficient light can also prevent proper cleanliness from being maintained. Privacy can be maintained by using meshes or lattices, or by placing windows in locations that prevent anyone outside seeing into the house. Disease vectors Disease vectors include insects, which should be prevented from entering the home. Keeping all food covered and ensuring that the waste is promptly and properly disposed of is an important step to take. Mesh screens on doors and windows, as well as keeping these closed at night and employing mosquito nets, can prevent the spread of insect-transmitted diseases. Keeping a home and the area surrounding it clean can further reduce disease transmission. Overcrowding. An overcrowded home is an ideal environment for the spread of disease. The lack of privacy can also cause stress. This is more than anything a socioeconomic issue, and increasing the size of a home is a difficult task. The most effective steps that can be taken are careful family size planning and persuading landlords and local governments to increase living space, ensure that prices are affordable and revise tenancy agreements. Requirements of a building surveyor Typically, becoming a building surveyor will require either a degree or else a professional qualification. This qualification will need to be approved by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. It can be in one of several subjects, including surveying, construction, civil engineering, building engineering, it might also be possible to undertake a Chartered Survey degree apprenticeship. The required grades for this apprenticeship are 4 to 5 GCSEs, A asterisk C, or grades 9 to 4. A levels or an equivalent are needed for a higher or degree apprenticeship. Skills and knowledge needed to be a building surveyor. The nature of a building surveyor's work means that they require abilities and knowledge in several areas. These include Knowledge of building and construction. A thorough and detail-oriented approach. The ability to interact effectively with customers and clients. To be comfortable acting on one's own initiative. Strong English language skills. The ability to think and approach a problem analytically. A good level of patience and the capacity to remain calm while under pressure. Reasoning and thinking skills. A basic IT or computer competence. Responsibilities of a building surveyor The role of a building surveyor requires carrying out a large range of tasks and taking responsibility for many areas. These include Keeping all projects within both budget restrictions and the determined schedule Providing clients with informed advice on projects and identifying the specific requirements Making the required preparations, including scheme designs with costings, the programs for the completion of projects, and the specification of works. 
organizing the documents needed for the tendering process, as well as providing advice on the appointment of contractors, designers, and procurement routes. Assessing existing buildings, in order to ascertain their condition, identify any areas in need of improvement, and make proposals, if repairs are required. Providing advice on subjects such as energy efficiency, sustainable construction, and the impact on the environment. When dealing with historic buildings, giving instruction to the client on preserving or conserving the property. Providing advice on how the maintenance of a building should be managed and maintained. Handling planning applications, while offering advice on the relevant property legislation and building regulations. Ensuring that buildings are accessible to individuals with disabilities both during assessment and design. Providing instruction on construction design and management regulations. Engaging in dilapidation negotiation. This can happen in the event when there is a legal liability for the property's state of disrepair. Completing feasibility studies. Providing building-related health and safety advice. Offering advice in the event of right to light or boundary disputes in addition to party wall, a shared wall that separates two separately rented or owned units, procedures. Preparing insurance assessments and claims. Summary. In this module, we have covered the following topics. A survey is a method of making large-scale, accurate measurements of the Earth's surfaces, while a building survey is concerned with a building's construction and condition. A building surveyor will evaluate the quality and condition of buildings, ensuring that they meet the standards required by legislation and the clients. Good quality housing requires sufficient ventilation, lighting, disease vectors and space in order to ensure mental and physical well-being. These are several routes that can be taken in order to become a building surveyor. The role requires a range of knowledge and involves a large number of responsibilities.